Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm in the old west town of Deadwood, South Dakota, and I'm going to be visiting historic Mount Moriah Cemetery. But first, let's take a quick photo tour of Old Town Deadwood. It's a photo tour because when I was saving today's files, I didn't include the footage from my walk around the historic district. I've cleared the SD card and those files are evidently long gone. It's a rookie mistake, I know. I arrived in Deadwood mid-morning and found free parking in a large lot at the visitor center. Parking is free and it's first come first serve, so I imagine it fills up pretty quick. Be sure to check out the visitor center and talk with the staff who are extremely nice and helpful and more than happy to offer suggestions and point you in the right direction. Then it's an easy walk from the visitor center up to historic Main Street. Deadwood is probably best known as the site where Jack McCall shot Wild Bill Hickok in the old number 10 saloon while Wild Bill was holding what has become known as the dead man's hand of aces and eights. Just after the shooting, McCall was captured in another saloon just up the street. A few years after Wild Bill was shot, there was a huge fire that destroyed most of the town. None of the historic buildings survived, but there are signs and historic plaques scattered throughout the historic district to show you where the original buildings once stood. Make no mistake, Deadwood is a tourist town. It's not as bad as Tombstone where you're bombarded with bad actors and bad street performers at every turn. While there are characters and performers in Deadwood, they're not constantly in your face. I actually enjoyed my visit to Deadwood and spent a lot more time here than I did in Tombstone. And now, let's head up to the top of a very steep hill and visit Mount Moriah Cemetery. Mount Moriah Cemetery is at the top of a very steep hill overlooking the town of Deadwood. While I was at the visitor center, I asked a member of the staff if I could walk to the cemetery from the historic district. The reply was, you can try, but I wouldn't recommend it. Even people who are in good physical condition have tried and failed. It's about a mile and a half from the historic district up a really steep and narrow road. So steep and so narrow that tour buses and other large vehicles are prohibited. And I can see why walking was not encouraged. The parking lot outside the cemetery was very small and I was able to snag the only spot left. In order to visit the cemetery, you must first check in at the small gift shop slash visitor center. There's a fee of $2 to enter the cemetery, but they give you a map that will help you find some of the other notable people buried here. It's a short walk of about 100 yards or so down a paved road to the graves of Calamity Jane and Wild Eel. You can see their graves from the road, but if you want a closer look, you will need to take the walkway up some stairs to see the statue and the grave markers up close. Mount Moriah Cemetery was founded in 1878 and is the final resting place of about 3,600 people. Of those 3,600 graves, only about a third of them are marked. You see, in the early years, there were two cemeteries in Deadwood, Englewood Cemetery and the Catholic Cemetery. It was later decided that the land where Englewood was should be used for housing and most of the bodies were moved and reinterred here at the top of the mountain at Mount Moriah. I say most because even today when people are working in their gardens, they sometimes find human bones left over from the old cemetery. As you walk up the stairs to the graves of Wild Bill and Calamity Jane, you come to the grave of Potato Creek Johnny who was somewhat of a Deadwood folk hero. 
Seems Johnny was panning for gold in Potato Creek when he found a large gold nugget. It's reportedly the largest piece of gold ever found in the Black Hills. Standing only four foot three inches tall, the small prospector became an instant celebrity, and his nugget reignited gold fever in the Black Hills. Johnny ended up selling this nugget for $250, and today it's on display in the Adams Museum. When Johnny died in 1943, he was buried here, near Wild Bill and Calamity Jane. And here is the grave of James Butler Hickok, who was born on a farm in Illinois on May 27, 1837. At 18, he moved west, taking a job as a stagecoach driver and later as a lawman in Kansas and Nebraska. He fought for the Union during the Civil War, where he gained a reputation as a top scout and marksman. After the war, Wild Bill turned to gambling and gained quite a reputation as a gunfighter. On August 1, 1876, Wild Bill was playing poker at the Number 10 Saloon here in Deadwood. One of the people at the table was a man named Jack McCall who had lost a lot of money in the game. When McCall left the game, Wild Bill gave him money for a meal, which insulted McCall. The next day, Bill was again playing poker in the same saloon. When McCall entered the saloon, walked up behind Wild Bill and shot him in the head. Bill's poker hand consisted of two pair of aces and eights. That hand became known as the dead man's hand. A friend of Wild Bill's named Charlie Utter claimed his body and arranged for a funeral on August 3rd, 1876. By all accounts, it was a grand affair with most of the town in attendance. Wild Bill was originally buried in Inglewood Cemetery, but on the third anniversary of his murder, Utter paid to have him moved and reburied here in Mount Moriah Cemetery. In 1891, a sandstone bust was placed at Bill's grave. It soon became a tourist attraction and souvenir hunters began chipping away at the bust and by 1903, when Calamity Jane was buried here, almost nothing was left. What was left of the original bust was removed and is on display at the Adams Museum. In 2002, the current bronze bust was placed at the grave. It was created by a local high school teacher named David Young and is said to be a replica of the original bust. next to Wild Bill is frontier folk figure Martha Jane Canary, better known as Calamity Jane. She was born in Princeton, Missouri on May 1, 1852, and as a teenager, Jane moved west with her family. Her parents died when she was just 14, and being the oldest child, Jane took charge of her five brothers and sisters. To provide for her family, Jane worked as a cook, waitress, nurse, and wagon driver. In 1874, Jane took a job as an army scout, and during one of the campaigns against the Indians, an army captain gave her the name Calamity Jane. The name stuck, and in 1876, she arrived in Deadwood, where she occasionally worked in one of the brothels. While in Deadwood, she became acquainted with Wild Bill Hickok, there's no evidence that the two was ever in any type of romantic relationship, even though some say that she was quite infatuated with Wild Bill. After Wild Bill's death, Jane remained in Deadwood for a few years before buying a ranch on the Yellowstone River in Montana. She later married a man named Clint Burke, and they moved to Colorado where she ran a hotel. In 1893, Jane took a job with Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show. She worked with Buffalo Bill for a couple of years before returning to Deadwood in the spring of 1903. On the trip to Deadwood, Jane fell ill and upon arrival took a room in a hotel. Over the spring and summer, 
Jane's health continued to deteriorate, and on August 1st, 1903, Calamity Jane passed away. A popular folk tale is that Jane's dying request was to be buried next to Wild Bill. Another version is that Wild Bill couldn't stand her, and she was buried next to him as a joke. Regardless of which story you believe, Calamity Jane and Wild Bill are buried near each other here in Mount Moriah Cemetery in Deadwood, South Dakota. Well, this wraps up my visit to Mount Moriah Cemetery and the graves of Wild Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane. If this is your first time here, welcome, and I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you enjoyed my videos, by all means, give them a thumbs up. I really do appreciate everyone who has taken time to watch my videos and subscribe. I'm truly grateful for your support. So until next time, just remember, life is a wonderful journey. Take time and enjoy it. And I'll see you down the road. So long, everyone.